For the last card in the deck, I just added, this is 100% a shout out to Daniel Dalby. I had no idea about this card. And when I read it, I absolutely freaked out. It, I had no idea. I had no idea. Yo, oh, oh, sha! What is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joe Crew DMD, and I am back from Nats. I am back in the lair. I managed to slide into 17th place out of 319 people of the best players in North America. If you were there and I met you, it was a pleasure meeting you. And if you're here, thank you for coming by. Uh, I wanna do a deck profile on the deck that I played. It was my favorite deck I've ever played in Dragon Ball. The original list is on the discussion group. If you are in the discussion group, you can go to one of my posts and it is there with the DBS links to that. But before we get into it, if this is your guys' first time here and you wanna see Dragon Ball Super card game content and shrippums and deck profiles and all that good stuff, make sure to hit that subscription button if you're a returning member of the Joe Crew. Thank you for coming by. And if I met you at Nats, it was a pleasure meeting you. I hope I hugged you. If not, I'll give you a hug next time. Let's get into this deck profile. So first thing, I gotta give a huge shout out to TCG Metals. We were not allowed to use metal leaders, but I had this metal leader right off to the side of my play mat for the entirety of the day that I played. It definitely brought me a lot of luck. And this leader is absolutely gorgeous. TCG Metals absolutely crushes it. They are so beautiful. Actual, like, I think these are more or less fine art. So you should pick yourself up some of these beautiful metal leaders. They're worth every single penny that you spend. I actually have a promo code in the description. It's Joe Crew 10. You can put that in there, save yourself 10%. Um, but some of the coolest looking leaders in the game. And if anything, they just bring you great luck. Of course, I have my lucky deck box with uh, stickers from Choto Minute and myself and Super Rose. Uh, really, really awesome stickers. And I use my custom sleeves from your play mat. These sleeves will be available. There is a Black Friday sale going on. I think you can save 30% with the Black Friday sale. I am asking them to post these sleeves on the site. So you should be able to find them. I'll title them Joku Wanted Sleeves and see if they can do that. Anyway, I don't wanna waste too much more time. I wanna get into the deck here and show you guys what's going on. So I'm gonna talk about this deck and take you through it and try and make it as exciting for you as it is for me, I love Soul Striker. I've been playing Soul Striker since he was printed. He's gone up and down over the sets. You know, he's become meta relevant, irrelevant. Blue was in a weird position for a long time in the Unison Warrior block, but Blue is finally getting really good again. Mono Blue is really strong, and Blue Yellow is looking to be really, really strong. There's some amazingly powerful cards from the new set. But if you guys don't know what this leader does, basically he has two awakening conditions. You can either awaken when you're at four or less life, or you can awaken when you have the Unison specimen by cost of three, which is very, very good. It's excellent to have a secondary awakening condition, especially in games where you want to protect your life more, which is happening more in this game. It used to be just kind of a race to four and then awaken, but it is not that way anymore. On his unawakened side, when he attacks, you can either draw a card or untap an energy. Pretty much always, you're gonna wanna draw that card. When he awakens, he draws two cards. And then when he's awakened, when he attacks, he draws cards and untaps two mono blue energy. So in this deck, basically what you're mulliganing for is you wanna have a unit Unison, you want to have a specified cost of three unison and one multicolor card. If you have those two things, you pretty much don't want to send those back. Other than that, you can mulligan for your secret rare, or if you have something specific to a matchup, like if you're in an aggro matchup, you know, you may want to play a bean. So you may not want to play a tapped energy turn one and turn two, you can play your multicolor. Um, with that said, let's get into the deck. Now, this deck has some changes. This is not the exact list I spent an hour and a half probably talking to daniel dalby last night shout out to you daniel daniel's the person in top cut that was playing his version of this deck we had not talked at all before nats but he came up with a somewhat similar list i would say the deck what's cool about this deck is it has a bunch of cards that have never been played in a tournament before and the cards that have never been played change the structure of a deck the deck so much that you have to run different packages that had no evidence of data and how they performed in tournaments. Daniel was able to pilot it into top 16. I almost piloted my version into top 16. I feel like right now his list is like 85% complete. And I would say my list is probably 75% complete. 
But I think when this list is complete and I think when the deck is totally done and it's at its strongest, I think this will be the strongest deck in the game. Of course, I'm putting back in one UI com Goku's Kamehameha. This card is just so dang pretty and I have no problem with it being in my energy. Like this is usually my turn to charge and there's ways you can get it back from your energy and it's really good to have that combo power accessible. But I wanna look at this card for the whole game because it's absolutely gorgeous and I feel like it gives you a lot of power. I'm running four beans. Bean is amazing in this deck. Every energy you can get back goes a long, long way. So all the energy that you can untap for yourself, you wanna get as much of that as possible. So I'm running four of these. I actually really like the parallel foil from Evolution Booster a lot better, but I ran one lucky alternate art bean. These will definitely become Mythic Booster beans as soon as those are available, because those are gonna look by far the best. This girl was the biggest assist ever. Now, I gotta give a huge shout out to John Lamont. Thank you for lending me these and actually giving me these. These cards, this girl is so, so good. So this is East Kai Keeping Watch. And basically how this card works is it's a cantrip. The cantrips are really, really important because they keep your deck cycling, they keep things going, and they give you one energy plays. One energy plays and Soul Striker are absolutely huge. One energy and two energy plays are very, very useful because your leader untaps two energy. So it makes it efficient to play your energy when you have small energy plays that are gaining you value. She cycles your deck and also on your turn, if your opponent plays a battle card, they have to choose one card in their hand and put it at the bottom of their deck and it's not once per turn. So this girl really keeps the Icarus matchup and the mono yellow matchups a lot more manageable because they're playing so much interruption on your turn. The Steadfast Gokus, Repost, any of those, if they're gonna play it, they're gonna have to think a little bit harder about playing it because on that Steadfast, that net one card, they're gonna have to bottom deck one and on the repost they're just gonna have to bottom deck one so it doesn't become basically free anymore and they still have to do the work to set it up by getting those two extra cards which isn't hard for them but she makes them put in a little bit more work and she definitely helped me a lot in a lot of matchups she's always something that opponents are going to want to deal with four apes and soul striker is pretty much mandatory no matter what list you're running it is just such a good card and you always want to play this card defensively if you can unless you're using it to a rival you want to play this defensively and the reason why is you just want to protect a 10k swing and it gives you something to grab out of your energy later on turn two it's good if you don't have anything else you're going to spend the energy on but a lot of times i was actually leaving this in my drop area until later turns to use it on turn four or turn five when i needed a two energy play to optimize the utility of my leader so four apes is mandatory if you guys don't know what this card does basically when it's in your drop area you pay two energy and draw two cards very very good to cycle and it's yellow so it gives you your yellow for your arrivals i'm cutting down to two baby unison baby unison is really really good but baby unison is the most amazing on turn six basically the play is now this is shout out to david sublet he taught me this play basically you want to play this and have it at five markers on turn six five or more if possible so you can play this on turn five protect it you play this on turn five for three energy you can swing with your leader get two energy back and bean your fifth energy back or you, if you have a dimension magic, you can use a dimension magic defensively. But you basically wanna play him, have five markers on him on turn six. You can baby hatch to stop attacks on turn five. And if they try and counter counter, you can pay five for your ape. So you always wanna keep five up for your ape when you baby hatch. You have him at five markers. You can minus five markers, create your counter counter setup, and then you can safely play foo because if they try to bloodlust or God sealing your foo or whatever it is, you can counter counter with the baby ape. And if they counter counter that and you have another ape in hand, you can counter counter their counter counter. So I think that's actually the strongest play in the game. And if you can establish foo on turn six and then you swing with your leader and you have a bean in hand, you can Kefla off the back of foo, which is I think the strongest play in the game right now. There is not much that can stop that if you're able to pull it off. So I think two baby unison is fine. Um, you, since now my game plan is kind of to see him later. After having a long conversation with Dolby, I realized how good Gogeta is. Gogeta is really, really amazing. And as my sensei Miguel calls him, Captain Insano. Captain Insano is just amazing. I mean, he is a dual attack 20K. So he's basically, he basically just clears unisons. He is amazing at clearing unisons. He can deal a lot of pressure and he allows you to bounce cards back. So there's a lot of cards that kind of uh, hard counter soul striker that are main deck cards for yellow and black. And when you don't want to deal with those, you can basically just minus one him and bounce them back to hand. And a lot of people will forget about his minus one. 
oftentimes they'll Kai on your turn, and then you can just bounce that card back to their hand, minus one. And three energy and Soul Striker is cheap, and this card is just really good. It gets around Repost, gets around a lot of things, so I think three of these is going to be good. I was running one this weekend, but I'm bumping it up to three because I think he is the earlier play, and he will help set up to get people in range for your win condition. I'm playing one Boo Unison. I think two would also be okay, but one was fine for me. A lot of times I didn't even need it and ended up charging it. Um, Baby Unison is just so good, and Captain Insano is bonkers, so I think they're both really good options but boo is really great when you need it and when you can establish it it uh can definitely win you games and bring a long turn of defense in your favor I'm playing two heroic prospect um i don't know if this is going to get changed one of these might get changed out for a fourth d magic but heroic prospect is good it was fine for me at two uh, a couple games i did side in the third but it's just a good looking card and i like having a a body negate that can also uh, fuel your arrival. So basically when you negate with this, you negate with this when you have a unison card in play, it'll only cost you one energy. The battle card comes out in play and for the duration of the turn, if your opponent attacks with battle cards greater than their energy, they have to choose two cards in their hand and send them to the bottom of their deck. Playing four God Ceiling, uh, had it at three for a little while, but four is just mandatory. The card is too good. Basically when your opponent plays a card, if you have a unison card in play, you can play it for free and send the card back to their hand. There are just too many things that this card stops it doesn't hit things with deflect obviously because of the counterplay skill however it's an extremely valuable card and worst case scenario if somebody clears your unison and you have five energy up it is worth spending five energy on this card i can tell you i've done it and it won me games so really really strong card also nice to have another 5k combo and it's a fantastic looking card playing three hit rapid movement so it does kill me to play a shatter foil and i'll probably actually just switch this to goku and hit because i like looking at that card more and i rarely ever pay for energy for this but the secondary effect of hit rapid movement is a lot better than the goku hit uh having that option for removal is very good but it's not something i think i'd ever use and i don't like looking at the card that much so i will probably change this to the goku hit because it's a lot prettier and i got some pre-release stamps but this is basically just your blue yellow arrival if you have a multicolor blue yellow in your energy you don't have to pay the combo cost for this card and you will have a blue yellow for your arrival in your combo area i'm playing two zamasu the eliminator this was fine at two um ideally you if you have one on turn two i'll keep my two energy up i won't ape and then i'll just stop a threat offensively for my opponent uh, play this for two either send something back to their hand and draw a card or just slow down their plays and tap something when they play something even if it has deflect you can play it and the auto will tap it down uh it's a very very strong card even though it got eroded it's still an amazingly strong card it's also great because you can charge it in active mode once you have a multicolor so on turn four you can charge this and that'll give you two yellows which really helps set up your keflas more optimally playing three lessons learned this card really got in there uh it's really good really really strong card i may possibly cut it to two i don't know if three is absolutely necessary i had it at four for a while and three felt fine so i may go down to two and make space for one other thing in the deck i have a couple other ideas of what I want to fit in here but I think the card's very strong. It gives you a secondary removal option where when an opponent is attacking, you can activate battle, play this card, and send anything four or less to the bottom of the deck. So if they're attacking with a battle card that's uh, four or less, basically you can just get this guy out there and get rid of whatever they comboed into it and that card itself. So very, very strong. It's also a dual attack 19K, so it helps deal with unisons. It helps apply pressure. It helps clear boards uh, in multiple ways. And it only costs one energy. So for one energy, I think you get a lot of value out of this card now definitely the mvp of the deck kefla lightning speed ss2 kefla lightning speed is the most insane card in the dragon ball super card game in my opinion this card is absolutely wild it's a double strike blocker that can gain dual attack and it can also draw you two cards tap one of your opponent's cards and you only play it for three energy and on top of that, when the card is played, you choose one of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier and send it to the bottom of their deck, which is absolutely nuts. This card is, I think, the best card that's ever been printed. And having the protection of this card, there is no battle card in the game that is safe anymore. There is not a single battle card that you can commit on any longer because this card exists and that changes the game completely. So having the ab ability to play this in a, in a leader that untaps you two energy every offensive turn, this card basically costs one energy. And to do all the things that this card does for that much energy investment 
is ridiculous. So I think that this card will be a meta relevant card for a very long time. I think the more support blue yellow gets will only make this card better. And it was so much fun playing this card. This was definitely the MVP of my day. She made it in there so many times. If you guys watch my match on stream, every time I won, it was because of her. When you can play her safely and you can protect her and make her put in the work that she can, the card is just absolutely wild. So four of her is absolutely mandatory. Best card in the deck best card in the game i just absolutely love this card i'm so excited to play it and it looks so good so i was running a little bit of a different super combo split i went around on super combos a lot in testing i ended up running one vegeta super combo it was just good to kind of filter hand and draw cards one of the issues that the deck runs into is the deck has really good stopping power but it doesn't have good combo power so kefla is an amazingly powerful card but 30k is really three or four cards depending on how many super combos they have to just combo out of but 35 is more difficult to deal with and 40 is a lot more difficult to deal with 40 is the power of a secret rare so being able to put a 40k combo on kefla and draw more cards is really really useful so that's why i started running vegeta discipline warrior i'm running one zamasu i was against running this card for a really long time and 40 minutes before i submitted my deck list i put this card in and i am so glad that i did because it definitely got me at least two games being able to rest somebody's leader and bring a kefla in on the back of that or bring a vegeta kaba in on the back of that is very very strong it's very interruptive and uh, the card just puts in a lot of defense so very very useful super combo one was fine i never needed more than that and then I'm running two Zeno super combos. And the reason why I'm running Zeno is because in this deck, you can really bait your opponent into a lot of stuff. When you tap out or when they see something in your energy, if they think you're just running one of them, they often will not play around that card anymore. And if you're playing Zeno, you can safely tap out, you can untap, you can bean, you can dimension magic. There's so many ways to manipulate your energy defensively and being able to tap out, this is the only card that you can safely tap out with when you're at five. You know you're gonna get that energy back unless this card gets ripped out of your hand for some reason, which it did once, but I managed to use another one that turn, so it was fine. Zeno Edge of Space is an amazing, amazing super combo. It's fine at three also, but if it's gonna be three, the one has to be Zamasu, um, but I really like having the combo power from the Vegeta Discipline Warrior, and it's a gorgeous alternate art. So that's my super combo split. I'm running one Turning the Tides. Uh, I actually cut this from the list like halfway through my testing and putting Kale, and Kale was doing a lot of work and she was really good, but in the big picture, Kale ended up being too heavy and uh, Sublet and Giancarlo were the ones that kind of explained that to me and it made a lot of sense in the way that they laid out the utility of the card versus the utility of this card. Um, really the only counter to this card is the Jiren counterplay and if you have a unison out in play and you play this card and they try and ape your unison or something like that you just keep the god ceiling in hand and deal with their ape. So really really useful card. Um, I would probably say this card can win a lot of games on turn seven. Obviously you have to have it, but if you do, it is just a really, really strong win condition. So one is totally fine. If you see it, you see it. And if you get it, it happens. But a lot of times you don't even need to play this. One Champa. Um, I kind of think this card might actually go. And it may sound crazy to say that, but there's a lot of double strikers in the deck already with all the Keflas and the Boo Unison. And there's a Golden Avenger. Um, Champa is really great. It's an amazing card. It's a win condition built into itself, but I've actually started to feel a little bit like this card is kind of a crutch and I don't like having crutches in the deck. It's in every single meta deck. I also don't like cards that are in every single meta deck. So there is a chance that this might, guy might end up seeing his way out, but for now I'm gonna keep him in and see how it continues to perform. Final Flash is just really a card and there's a lot of yellow. So getting this negated off a of swing feels not as good, but this is a really pretty one got a level two and i'll continue to play it until i really make that decision to cut it but it is a game defining card for sure so you know more or less every deck should have one i'm playing two golden avenger and this card was absolutely mvp this card is so so good um, not as much as Kefla, but having the ability to counter counter and especially the baby unison, just being able to drop two cards and play this is so, so strong. It gives in that safety net of being able to play cards without them getting countered later in the game. And to have a counter counter that's also a triple strike 30k body that bottom decks something ignoring barrier and draws you a card is just, it's so strong. 
it's so so strong and the card is absolutely beautiful i'm so glad i got a winner reprint because these cards look so dang good um but two of is a must and keep these in your hand never combo these off please trust me when i say that keep your golden avengers because you might need to counter counter a counter counter to your counter counter trust me i'm running one secret id um i do have a judge print of it but i like how the mask is shiny on the original foil so i'm playing this one and i never pulled a pre-release of it so i'm happy with this one but i did have two secret ids in the main uh i changed that the day before and went to one secret id one foo shrouded and i'm really glad that i did because foo shrouded is also just a win condition and having as many win conditions as possible in your deck makes your deck a lot stronger so the turn six foo shrouded minus five baby counter counter with the ape and then you play a kefla off the back of foo by untapping with your leader it's just it's i think the strongest play in the game i really don't think that there's anything that can deal with it and i think once you establish a board state like that and you shut all your opponent's battle card all your opponent's cards off it's uh not really anything that your opponent can do at that point so foo shroud is an amazing card secret id puts in a lot of work uh just with board removal and sometimes you just need that free body to play to swing Maybe you're playing around a poutine or something like that to get your Kefla out safely. So Secret ID really uh, puts in that work. For my tech card, I was running one Sun Gohan and Piccolo. Um, this card put in a lot, a lot, a lot of work. There's a lot of stuff that I just wanted to clear off boards and there's a lot of stuff that I don't wanna put back in people's hands. So I don't wanna put blockers back in people's hands, the Steadfast. I really don't wanna put the One Drops and Gogeta back in their hands. So this was really useful in getting in there and just removing those from the board. I think I played this every single game that I saw it. Um, um, it's also a one energy play and one energy plays in soul striker are amazing so basically you just play this for one energy put it in your drop area and you choose two of your opponent's cards energy cost three or less and put them at the bottom of their deck baby hatch best secret rare in the game i've said it since the day it was printed um buys you a turn and in blue more often than not all you need is one more turn so if you can just play this and get that other turn you can push through and win the game best most amazing secret rare you drop one card for it and you get a 40k swing on board and you stop all of their attacks for the duration. For my negate split, I was running one Chilled's Army and three Dimension Magic. I might cut one Heroic Prospect for a fourth Dimension Magic. I think having more energy manipulation is more valuable than bodies on board because oftentimes Heroic Prospect will just get warped. The secondary effect of Heroic Prospect gets in there sometimes, but I'm probably gonna go to four Dimension Magic and the one Chilled's Army because having Chilled's Army and being able to go from five Five to four safely and turn on your vegeta super combo is very very useful oftentimes while protecting a unison and creating a blocker to buy yourself another swing very very useful card kind of forces them to use their secret id if they're trying to push and they have it the last card in the deck i just added this is 100 percent a shout out to daniel dalby i had no idea about this card and when i read it i absolutely freaked out it i had no idea i had no idea it is just so cool so basically captain insano the gogeta unison has a permanent that says if your leader's a blue sand and you have a blue sand battle card in rest mode your leader cannot take damage from attacks so if somebody doesn't deal with gogeta and he's sitting there and they're trying to push for game and he's at one marker and they're thinking okay they can't god ceiling and they swing it at your leader and you don't care because you have this card in hand you let them dump and push as much as you can and then you just activate battle put this in your battle area in rest mode and they will you will not take damage for the battle because this card says activate battle if your leader's mono blue sand and you only have and you have a blue unison in play play this card from your hand in rest mode so you just play him for free in rest mode he'll be in rest mode and your leader won't be able to take damage i absolutely love this tech i think it's totally genius um it's a really really cool option and i am totally excited to get people with this play so if you're coming to greg's and playing at locals watch out when i have a good gd unison on board because i might just cheese you all right so that's the main board i'm going to go into the sideboard here i was playing another piccolo gohan just for that extra removal two oceanus really came in clutch with my ga uh, game with uh david fujimara on uh on stream really really amazing card you just you have to play around this card you you have to stop swinging when this card is played because if you do swing you're just milling your options from your deck and you're setting yourself up to lose the second secret id in some matchups fushrata would get sided out and i would run two secret id 
Raditz Giant Force, just for matchups where I need a little bit more defense, I would throw these guys in. The blocker is really, really useful. Um, and just, you know, he draws and switches to active mode. Uh, switches to active mode when he blocks. So basically you block an attack and he switches to active mode immediately after, which is very, very useful. Two Borgos, this really came in clutch for the mirror match and for Icarus. Uh, people have to get rid of him and they have to figure out a way to get rid of him. And if they're just sending him back to your hand, you just play him and draw a card again, which is really nice. Mechacabra, the Broken Seal. Um, this actually might get a spot in the main board. I've been, I was, after talking with Daniel last night, he made some really, really good points about the card. Um, it's just a really, really strong card that can buy you basically an entire turn against a linear deck. And in blue, the important thing is setting up. So if you have that time to set up, you have less opportunities to lose, basically. Um, the more turns you have in blue, the better you're off, and he can buy you an entire turn quite easily if you just call the right name. The third uh, Heroic Prospect, this will become the second Heroic Prospect probably, so I'll probably put two in the main and then put one more D-Magic in the main, and this will be the secondary one that I'll side in for games. Three Deborah Ritual Hand. I didn't see a single Deborah, so um, shout out to, I think it was Alejandro Perez that gave me a Deborah that's right behind me right there. Um, it brought me luck. I kept it in my pocket the whole day and I dodged every single cell search. Though there, I think there were only like 14 in the room, but still I didn't play one and I was happy to not play one. So didn't need him in my side, but had him in my side. And then one Mass Sand, Clash and Mass Warriors. Um, Kind of wish I sided this in in a game where I didn't uh, would have gotten me the game, but I did not uh, have it and uh, it would have helped out a lot. Um, basically, you activate battle, pay one energy and your opponent removes a marker from their unison. So if their unison has double strike or gain double strike, um, this will remove the double strike. So very, very useful card. Didn't actually side it in any games, but it's nice to have some unison protection in your sideboard. Uh, anyway, guys, that is the deck profile. I hope you enjoyed it. I am a dentist. I can't end the episode without doing a dental tooth tip. Go buy yourself a Listerine Ultra Clean Flosser. Go on Amazon and just buy one, buy 10 packs of the refill heads and spend a lifetime of flossing because working for your teeth will make your teeth work for you. Trust me, please, on this. Thank you all for watching this deck profile. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, there's going to be a ton of content coming this week. I have so much stuff that I've recorded and I'm so excited to share with you. I had an absolute blast at Nats. It was so fun meeting so many amazing players. Uh, getting 17th place was awesome. You know, I wish I did get into top 16, but being first in top 32 feels pretty good. And I think, uh, in a sense, I brought something home for New Jersey. So coming back to Jersey and my boys in AZ crushed it. Jared, I am so amazed with your performance, man. And uh, Daniel also being able to pilot this deck that has no tournament evidence on the bulk of it and how it performs. You really did an amazing job, man. So my hat is off to you. Uh, so cool to meet so many new friends and I will see you guys next time.